Peace, friends. I'm Pastor Tom Arthur from Sycamore Creek Church in Lansing, Michigan. Whether you experience sheltering in place as positive or negative, we can all shelter in God's grace daily. Psalm 91 says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Our Daily Shelter is a live video podcast where we interview an expert in one area or topic related to COVID-19 and sheltering in place so that we can find God's grace for today. We cover a range of topics from science to government and theology to prayer. We're looking to find God's grace in each area of our lives. So let's shelter in God's grace together right now. When you think of a racist, what comes to mind? Skinheads, white robes, burning crosses? If that's your image of racism, it's easy to dismiss racism as a current problem, but the challenge of racism is that we all participate in it and we're all affected by it. White people tend to benefit in subtle and not so subtle ways and people of color tend to be negatively impacted or crushed by racism. So what can we do to get out of the racist trap we're all in right now? And that's on display so clearly during COVID-19 and Mm. even just after the events of George Floyd's death yesterday by the police in Minneapolis. Today, I'm thankful to have on our daily shelter, Victoria Gibbs. Victoria is one of the facilitators for Congregations Organizing for Racial Reconciliation, Mm. or CORE. She's going to help us think through the racial disparities of COVID-19 and understand better the systems and structures of racism that perpetuates these disparities. Victoria, thank you so much for joining us today. I am so glad to be here. So before we get to the topic of racism um, and COVID-19, tell us a little bit about your own personal experience uh, of COVID-19 and sheltering in place and Have there been any moments of God's grace in the midst of the challenges? I would have to say that my biggest moments of grace have been to be away in a very secluded place, in a place, actually the home of my birth, up in the woods, and knowing that God very intentionally has given me the perfect place to shelter in place. So Mm -hmm. I am just basking in his goodness every day and I feel like he has granted me this possibility because he wants me to think very very deeply about what he's doing right now in -hmm. the middle of this pandemic because um, oftentimes I I really believe that God is saying to his kids go to your room Hmm. it's time to go to your room it's time to sit down and think and get a grip on who I am hmm. and what I'm doing, how I really am in control of everything. And if you don't believe me, just listen to the news. Hmm. So that's been my biggest sign of grace. And it's difficult to do in light of the fact that I have two family members. We've one already had to have a virtual funeral and now we're planning another virtual funeral wow that's extremely challenging to wrap our minds around the fact that we cannot be with our loved ones now mm-hmm. and every time i think about it you know people that i've known all of my life i can't even go with a hug yeah yeah. It's mind blowing. I, you know, your your thought about like God saying go to your room and think about it. I mean, that's. I can't say that I've had anybody else respond in that way. We're what what we're we're like on episode thirty. Is that what we're on right now, Jeremy? Something like that. I mean, twenty nine other people. Nobody's thought of thinking of this or reflecting on it in that way. But boy, that really resonates with my spirit. Go to your room and think about it. So he's given me an opportunity to think, write, listen to music, and 
these are the types of things that I've always said in the back of my mind that I'd like to have more time for. God said, here you go. Okay. Here you go. That reminds me, we, we interviewed Charlie Dobson, um, who's training for the Olympics, and she was praying to God a couple months ago. She's saying, God, I don't have enough time uh, to train. I need some more time. <laughs> and she said, but I didn't know that I needed this much time um, or in this way. But uh, yeah, that, that gift of time has been something that uh, many of us have experienced. It's good to hear that that's something you're experiencing too. It is in a way that I know only God can uh, create this kind of environment. And yeah. it's, it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I, I grieve with you as well that you haven't been able to grieve with your family members um, and your Thank loved you. ones. I've, uh, we've had a couple of our friends who've lost loved ones. Um, and this is just a really challenging time. Uh, mm -hmm. in that. I think especially in the black community, um, uh, somebody, I think Charlie Dobbs actually sent me uh, a link that to update me that like over 30 Kojic leaders, bishops mm -hmm. and church leaders have died in the last mm -hmm. couple of months. I mean, this has just devastated the black church Mm -hmm. um, in, in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. Now, usually you're unpacking racism with me and all kinds of people, uh, in a room over three days. Um, but right now we got about eight minutes. So <laughs> what's, <go> what's, <laughs> what's the one big thing that we need to know about racism during this whole COVID-19 thing? Is that right now we are seeing I in color or has been trying to say in some effective, some maybe not as effective ways, that this system of racism has been manufactured for years. It's been going on. And it's time to accept the fact that this is manufactured. There was a system set in place so that there were a group of people, white, who were given benefits on how to live in this society. And then another segment of society, people of color, who are to be oppressed in order for white society to move forward in the way that they have designed. As a result of these systems being put in place, have been some internalized messages that we have nursed our mother's breasts to receive to flourish. And so trying to just say it one day, I'm done with this is over, it's impossible because mm -hmm. it's innately who we are. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say this is a system that's been manufactured, I mean, we, we again, we spend two to three days of unpacking that system. But can you give us just one example of, of um, I mean, I, I think about the many Supreme Court cases that kind of ended up defining race or, or situations like that. Can you give us an example of how this system has been manufactured over centuries? When you ask that question, the first case that comes to my mind is Takawa Osawa, who was a Japanese man who went to the Supreme Court so that he could become a citizen. And he was denied. And the justices said, whiteness is what whiteness says that it is. Mm -hmm. And he was denied that citizenship. Then that sin then came right behind with another court case because they had said that whiteness came out of the Caucasoid mountains and this was the area that he was from so he appealed in order to become white and it may have been that case where the verdict was whiteness is but we say that it is but one of those two cases that mm -hmm. was the justice's rendering on that situation so, I think I said this before, it's maybe a crude analogy, but it, it's similar to the, the justices uh, or the judge who says, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. And, and it's, it's, it's almost like there's a, there's a tradition in the Supreme Court of saying, we can't exactly define whiteness or who's white and who's not, but we know it when we see it. 
Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and they'd look at, at you and say, you're not it. Um, mm -hmm. And so you don't get to be a citizen. Mm -hmm. You are it and you do get to be a citizen. Mm -hmm. This has been going on since the inception of this country. It's another interesting insight that um, when Europeans came to this land, they found the Native Americans. Originally, they said, okay, um, let's, let's embrace them. Let's, let's look at them as brown white people. And then after the country had been plodding along, developing, they changed their minds. They being the uh, leaders, the justices, they, they said they're hopeless. There's nothing that we can do with them. They are, let's banish them from the face of the earth. So it was interesting how in a, a, a very short period of time, they were accepted as brown white people because they, the country saw a value to these people who had been on the land and knew the land, and could work the land. They saw a value when they felt like we can use these people for our best interest. But then as soon as these people rose up against them, they said, oh no, oh no, 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 we can't have this. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I've appreciated about uh, the core training, uh, the Understanding Racism workshop that we work with you to run twice a year um, in the Lansing area. And then you run it several times in the Grand Rapids area more mm -hmm. than twice a year. Um, is how this is not just about black and white or, or, or black, mm -hmm. black, brown, red, yellow, like it's the whole thing um, in, in relation to, to what it means to be white um, or American or so on. You, you, you described this as manufacturing. We just looked at a couple of instances of that here, but then you described as well some things we've internalized. Where, where are you seeing some of those internalized things show up right now during COVID-19? Where, how, how, have, how have I, how have we who are white internalized whiteness in the midst of that? How are there ways you've seen um, people of color internalize components of this racist self image during COVID-19? You know, Tom, I don't know if I could be explicit in any place more than the fact that look at the demographics now, as far as the number of people of color who have succumbed to this disease. You look at those numbers and I really don't believe that these numbers were reversed. These were white people being afflicted the way that the people of color have been afflicted. There would be this, this prevailing attitude of lack of care. I just don't believe that would be going on that these numbers were reversed. But that's the biggest place that I see it. And then when I hear that the diagnosis is the disease on top of underlying ailments, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, types of underlying diseases that afflict black community in abundance. And they can't afford the medical treatment. They can't, they'd rather not go to the doctor. They would rather just live with things like diabetes and high blood pressure because, well, that's just the way that it is. So the more you pull on the string, the more you see why these numbers are so disproportionate, you begin to see that this is a part of the manufacturing. You begin to see that what segment of the population settles for food deserts in their community? where they actually buy all their groceries from Dollar Tree, where there's not fresh fruit or vegetable within mm -hmm. miles. Mm -hmm. How can you support a good healthy system when you do not have access to good healthy food? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I keep pulling the string on this stuff and it just keeps on going to that fact that there's something in motion that's being perpetuated, it's being ignored that this country is okay with. Yeah. I pulled the thread on something just yesterday in my own situation that blew my mind. I have to take a medication for an autoimmune disease that I found out yesterday is the $1,900 and the copay is going to go up to $500 a month. What? You're, you're saying that you just found this out? That you yesterday, have to do this? Yesterday, I was on the phone with uh, Medicare um, addendum or whatever they call it, whatever that thing is that's attached to Medicare. Yeah. To find out why is it that when I went into the drugstore, it was five times as much as it was last time. And they explained to me that I had fallen off into the donut. Hmm. So I had to call the train. What the heck is the donut? And so now my query is going to be, how prevalent is this in the African-American community? Yeah, yeah. Well, and when, when, when racism is, you know, on your back, do you have the energy and resources to just to, to navigate all of those challenges? Exactly. It, it's a lot for, for us to navigate. Um, the healthcare system and our insurance from time to time with a lot of resources in place. And if you're, if you don't have all those resources, I mean, it's even more overwhelming. And the um, first thing that that person from the insurance company asked me was what is your zip code? Hmm. And I said, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Why aren't you asking me for the zip code of the physicians that I'm seeing? Well, we need to know what, available to you in your community hmm. okay it begs a question it begs a whole lot of questions yeah yeah friends you can post some comments or some questions in the q a section um, and our executive producer jeremy is following those discussions here in zoom and also on facebook and he'll bring those questions of victoria in a moment Victoria, I want to turn the corner just a little bit here. On, on Memorial Day, I participated in what was called a prayer-demic prayer service that was led by Lansing region pastors and church leaders. It was really kind of around a letter that was signed by about 100 white church leaders here in the Lansing region, condemning the racism we were currently seeing in shootings like uh, Ahmad Arbery and, uh, of course, uh, just even yesterday. I mean, th this is really sad that we, we, we just did this on Monday. And now here's another thing that it feels like you, mm -hmm. you know, almost you got to go around and write a whole nother letter mm -hmm. um, and get, you know, a hundred more you know, people to sign it. But, uh, but it, it, the letter was, uh, um, was condemning the racism that we see in, in those deaths. Um, and, and the impact of COVID-19 on communities of color do, as you hear about something like that, and I, I don't know how much you were familiar with what we were doing, but no, no. does signing a letter and joining a prayer service mean anything? Um, as you think about that from as a person of color, seeing white Christians in Lansing do that, or, or is this too little too late? Um, I was just in a core meeting this morning, and I had to reiterate very strongly that I believe we are prepared preparing ourselves to be in a movement. We're preparing ourselves to be honest and open about this internalization and then to go to the Holy Spirit of God, give evidence that this is real, and then get us on a path of dealing with this internalization. And then when his kids, Black, white, Asian, Native American, when his kids get a grip on the fact that we have been shaped by a system that is antithetical.
radical to God's plan, then we can even the playing field and go to war. Hmm. Go to war, lockstep, hand in hand, red and yellow, black and white. We are all precious in his sight. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to start acting like it mm. because we have not acted like it. Yeah. But when white people show up and support what is going on with a, a voice that says no more, no more, mm -hmm. We're not doing this anymore. So I'm going to join with my people of color allies. I'm going to give my voice and my power to a movement that is going to at least take some bricks down mm -hmm. that have been formulated over the years because it's going to take all of us and it cannot be in my in my imagination it cannot be an all white and all black and all it can't be an all or not because god is doing this mm -hmm. And he wants his kids to understand that you guys have perverted, totally perverted who I put you on the planet to be. Hmm. And as soon as you all get a grip on the fact that I put you on the planet to be agents of a new way to be that I gave my son for. Hmm. Mm -hmm. As soon as you all get a grip on that and stop playing into what this system has told you that you are, then I can get some people ready. Yeah. So yes, a, a letter by a bunch of white pastors is saying to the community, we can't stand it no more. And we're willing to do some things with our brothers and sisters that's going to require a whole lot of work in order to build momentum for this movement. Yeah, yeah. Go to your room and think about it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna have to give you credit for it. But uh, I, and don't I, come out till I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, Jeremy, uh, you, you've been paying attention to the to the comments in Facebook, or the uh, I, I don't see any here in the Q and A here in Zoom, mm -hmm. um, but but I'm not paying attention to Facebook. Is anybody asking anything over there on Facebook that they well, want? First of all, the Facebook uh, world is telling Victoria to preach. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a lot of uh, yeah, she was kind of Victoria. she was getting on her on her uh, inner pulpit there. It was great. I mean, uh, one person said spiritual warfare against racism. Yes. And that's essentially what we're talking about. Um, one question, Victoria, that just came in um, a second ago was, how can white Christians best respond to racial disparities during COVID-19? Well, Jeremy, unfortunately, my observation over the many years that I've been doing this is that white folk want to hurry up and go do something. Hmm. And I don't, I'm not mad at that because a whole lot needs to be done. My preference is that people start looking at who they're going to be. Mm. Who are we going to be? Mm -hmm. We got to do some stuff, but who are we going to be? Something mm. that we're introducing in our coaching um, plan is to en envision the work after a workshop as a three-leg stool. One of those legs is looking at our internalization. Another leg is looking at the, the history, looking at what, what happened to get us where we're at, because we need to prove in our own minds that this thing was systematized a long, long time ago. And the third piece is a strategy. When those legs of that stool are imbalanced, hmm. don't get a whole lot of stability for a movement. So when you ask me what to do without doing the internalization work without doing the work of actually finding out how did we get here? Are we willing to believe that this thing was systematized without doing that work? 
Been out there where the strategy is another pile of paper that will be sitting up on a shelf somewhere mm -hmm. five years from now. Victoria, I, I mean, I've been working with you in core in Lansing for three or four years now, and I'm having a light bulb moment just on the way that you phrase that about focusing first on who I, I'm trying now to just remember exactly how you said it, who we are being or, or who are we going to be, who are we going to be? And, and I think a lot of times um, when you're white and you're in those understanding racism trainings, you want to like go out and make something happen right now. And, and, and the trainings are really not about that. And the caucuses that we do follow up, they're really about the kind of person that we're becoming, which is in a lot of ways, a more fundamental question. Um, yeah. One, one follow-up question to that is um, someone just wrote in, in the platform on zoom here. I'll read it verbatim for you, Victoria. It says, what wisdom do you have to help us slow down as white people and develop the stamina to stay in this work? I mean, I know there's caucus. Um, this person has been to the anti-racism training, but how, what advice do you have to help us slow down and to stay in the work and to build that stamina? Hmm. I'd say the first thing is develop an honest relationship with a person of color. Honest. Not a, a relationship where the person of color is just saying, oh, you're just great, honey. Just let me help you dry your tears. Let me, let me hold your hand. Let me walk with you because you're really a nice person and I see you, you really, really trying to do this. I'm talking about an honest relationship where I can call you at one o'clock in the morning because I haven't seen my son in a month hmm. and I can really pour out my heart to you and tell you that that's a reality. Mm. that's a reality but if you got me on an eight to five relationship type situation you really don't want to know what i'm dealing with mm. ouch you yeah. just want to see me let's go have tea let's yeah go have coffee mm -hmm. ouch go yeah. away well then 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 victoria i can say i have a black friend um exactly. we, we get a drink every once in a while um rather than diving into that hard work. Yeah. Because it's hard work. It's hard work to be in relationship with somebody that you see suffering day in and day out because of the stuff. And I would like to use another word that the system <laughs> has put in place. I can't do anything about but live with. Yeah. I have to be teaching this 24 7. I have sons, they're 37, 38, and 39, something like that. I keep losing track, but one of them's over 40. So that bottom line is I have to keep on helping them understand what is going on. And that's one of my biggest regrets coming up the way that I did because I was brought up to be race neutral. Hmm. We're all precious in his sight. You know, man, you're going to start meddling right now. Well, you know what? The medication that they tell me that I had to get, <laughs> I received that whole season of my life. God saying to me, look here, girl, you don't have a whole lot of time. Mm. Yeah, Victoria, mm -hmm. someone um, just wrote in the comments on Facebook, their true litmus test is whether we can call one another at 1 a.m. or not. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Victoria, I'm really grateful for you taking the time to be with us today. And I know afterwards, uh, when we chat for a little bit, you're going to say that went really fast. Um, because, because it did. Um, and, and I think if, um, I mean, my, my own reaction to, to our prayer thing was that it was good and it was necessary but it was also not anywhere near enough. Um, and, and that's why I deeply appreciated your leadership um, and friendship. And uh, um, you're making us feel uncomfortable today, um, but also the commitment to stick with us um, in it. So I, I really wanna encourage people to look up CORE, um, Congregations Organizing for Racial Reconciliation. You can find it on Facebook. Um, we're gonna come back to that in just a little bit. But, um, we, we have this segment, um, Victoria, on, on here that we call Co-Video Conversations. Um, and uh, this may be a little bit of a hard uh, right turn uh, from the conversation we've been having, but uh, it starts with this.
So this is the segment of our podcast uh, where we share a video, a meme, a photo, a news event, or pretty much whatever is on our minds. And we have, uh, well, a conversation about it, Victoria. And hopefully we do a little bit of laughing along the way. To, ma to make it interesting, uh, we let Jeremy out of his cage. Uh, you know, normally we keep him in the background because um, you never know what he's going to say. Right. Um, that's why I had to have him join the core training. Um, so, uh, so Jeremy, uh, what do you got for us here today? Well, um, I'm currently up in Traverse City and it's raining dogs and cats, but some of you are um, constantly thinking about mowing your lawn. Yeah. I've mowed my lawn three times in the last seven days or so just because wow. of all this rain. <laughs> it's been incredible with all the humidity. That's the more I've mowed my lawn than I've ever have. But I, I feel like this video is a new, a new thing. We should all jump on board. Take a look. <laughs> Guys, see that? Oh my god. He has a rope tied to that lawnmower and it's perfect. Every time he gets it out, that cast it the rope through the pole there. Now they're gonna zoom over to the isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, where has that been all my life? Why have I paid somebody to mow my yard? You know what I mean? Just put the thing on a leash and see what happens. That's essentially what he did. That's pretty ingenuitive, though. The way that he figured that out, I mean, the, the throttle on the, on the mower, as opposed to how fast it's winding the cord around the pole, it was perfect. That's a, I thought that was fascinating. That's crazy. Necessity is the mother of invention. That's right. Actually, uh, this afternoon, uh, Victoria, my, my oldest son, who is nine, has started mowing the yard in the last uh, week or two. And I feel like I've been living my fatherly life for this moment. Uh, Amen. Where, Amen. Where, where I no longer have to Amen. mow my own yard. But, but he's still kind of little. So uh, he mows it in 20 minute increments, 20 there minutes one day, and it takes him three days to mow the whole yard. But um, I guess uh, we, if, if that doesn't work out, we can go, go to Jeremy's uh, thing there. Amen. It immediately brings me to a time I came home and my son had carved his name in the, in the grass. And then I went in the house and he was on the couch sleep. Like <laughs> That's great. You mean he did it with the lawn? He did it with the lawnmower? With the lawnmower. He put his name in the grass and then he went to sleep. <laughs> As better as I can do. <laughs> better that and those weird crop circles that just freak you out about the aliens putting in circles in your grass. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, Victoria, how how can people uh, connect with you or keep up with you? Um. Well, why don't I just give my email address, Victoria Gibbs at sbcglobal.net. Um, would give you more information, but I don't have my core card here in front of me to tell you that immediately. Okay. Jeremy will get that email in the chat section there. Yeah. The Victoria Gibbs at sbcglobal.net. Correct. And, and I, Victoria, I think uh, CORE has a, a website and is on A Facebook. website, yes. And um, that's what I wish I had right here in front of me. I don't. Um, well, bad, there's this bad, great bad. thing uh, called Google, and actually, we just talked to it now. And it, it's it, it's on Google. It comes up. I do believe it's Core Now. C O R R N O W. Um, Core Now, so. yeah. But if if you just Google congregations organizing for racial reconciliation yes. or Core yes. Lansing, or and at least Core Lansing, we do most of our organizing on Facebook, um, so people can find us there and get involved with it. You know, Victoria, we were hoping we had actually on the calendar to do a workshop in September with you all. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, I don't know what's going to happen or whether we're going to be doing it online or how we'll do it, but um, the work is continuing and I want to encourage people to, to join in there. Um, how, how can those who are uh, watching or listening right now, how can they be in prayer for you? Well, I believe the biggest thing we need now is wisdom from God with regard to how we move forward. Our team has met every Monday morning for three hours since December. Wow. We have a lot of things going right now that will perpetuate the work 
we need God's wisdom to know how to prioritize because we're yeah. we're we're doing stuff that we've never done before. But we're committed. Like I said, we show up every Monday morning from nine until noon, nine of us. Plotting, mm -hmm. planning, talking, hearing each other's hearts and saying the, the one of the questions this morning I are we planning to move forward just in response to the pandemic? Or do we see this as a brand new trajectory as far as online stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a familiar conversation we're having at the church and just about every church and organization is. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like all of us are two and a half month old organizations right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a whole new world. Well, friends, I want to invite you to join me in praying for Victoria in the work of CORE uh, right now. God, we are so thankful for Victoria. We're thankful for the way that you have uh, used her to share uh, wisdom with us today, um, perhaps even to make us feel a little uncomfortable. Um, but we thank you mostly for her friendship and that continued commitment to be in the work together. Um, we pray that as CORE thinks about its future right now, um, its future with uh, kind of how this whole digital world is shaping up, we pray for wisdom, for discernment, to be able to prioritize, um, you know, Lord, I know from my own experience that we've got lots of ideas, probably too many ideas, um, but we have a limited amount of time. Um, and we pray for your spirit's wisdom and guidance for how to use the time that you've given to us. Um, as Victoria's uh, even sort of thinking about that right now, um, as she shared about this, this medicine and wh whatever, and the way that you're making her think about, you know, her time, all of our time, our days are numbered, Lord. Um, and Lord, we pray that Victoria's days would be numbered more uh, than maybe uh, uh, even all of us might hope that uh, she or her work would continue um, and that your grace would continue to thrive in her and through her, through the work of CORE, through her family, through her loved ones, her neighbors um, in this state, in this country, and in this whole world. Um, use your servant, Victoria, and give her the wisdom to be used in that way. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus and the power of your Holy Spirit and all who agreed said, Amen. 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 Friends, join me in giving Victoria some love in the comments section mm -hmm. and, uh, and in the, the, the Q&A or chat section here on Zoom. There are a couple things that I want you to be aware of. Uh, our Daily Shelter has moved to a midweek podcast. We host live shows on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and they're usually at 3 p.m. Uh, you can join in live on Zoom at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash ODS or on our Facebook page, or you can always watch them afterwards on our Facebook page uh, or on our YouTube channel. Uh, while you're on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, would you like the Facebook page and would you subscribe to the YouTube channel? Uh, that way you'll be up to know and in, in the know for everything uh, that we've got coming on. Our Daily Shelter returns tomorrow with reading the Old Testament during trial and tribulation with Dr. Ellen Davis. Dr. Davis is the Amos Reagan Kearns Professor of Bible and Practical Theology at Duke University Divinity School and was my Old Testament professor during my time in seminary. I, I got to say that whenever I talk about her, I often say that she saved the Bible for me um, and I spent many hours in her office and actually she came um, to have dinner with Sarah and I at several times uh, in our home with her husband. Um, Dr. Davis will guide us finding God today by reading through the trials and tribulations of the Old Testament. Right now, I think that we all need to connect with something bigger than ourselves, and we want to encourage you to connect with God and others at Sycamore Creek. Stay connected with us and always know about opportunities to connect through our digital connection card, sycamorecreekchurch.org slash connect. Don't shelter alone. Connect with others and God at Sycamore Creek. Friends, you've been watching Our Daily Shelter, a daily-ish live interactive video podcast and ministry of Sycamore Creek Church in Lansing, Michigan. In this time of sheltering in place, we think it's important to connect with the community. So find community every Sunday at 1 p.m. in a live interactive worship event at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash slworship. That stands for South Lansing Worship. 
or every Monday night in a church-wide video chat open to everyone at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash allchat. You can connect with us and we can connect with you through our digital connection card found at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash connect. Submit prayer requests here on this topic or really any topic or by email at prayers at sycamorecreekchurch.org. We've got a team of people who are praying for you daily. Download and check out our app by searching for SCCMI in your app store, and you'll find lots of great resources there, including past and current sermons. You can also join the mission of Sycamore Creek by giving financially through the app or at our website, sycamorecreekchurch.org. Your generosity helps make resources like Our Daily Shelter available for free. Take a moment and like and follow us on Facebook and share this video with your friends so they can find daily shelter in God's grace too. You may be sheltering in place, but we're here to help you shelter in God's grace. Make your home a shelter of the Most High.